morning guys it's april 7th um we got two units lined up here this first one the rx uh is my unit um the next one is going to be ashton's unit with the 1050 um the rx is pulling an 84 foot uh, borgo drill with a 1300 bushel cart the 1050 is uh, pulling the smaller drill it's a 68 foot uh with a 950 cart uh, these units are loaded they're calibrated they're greased they're fueled um, they're 100 percent ready to rock and roll Got Ashton a new uh, little tool kit. Uh, basically, this is actually what we were looking for. It's a quarter inch impact driver. Let's see if I can focus in on that. Maybe I can't. Anyways, <clears throat> there you go. We use that for any of our hoses or whatnot. So that's actually gonna go on Ashton's uh, tractor here. But you guys might be saying to yourself, well, Mike, if two are ready to go, why don't you just send them out? And you know what? That's actually a really good question. Uh, but the thing is, Seeding and harvest, those are the two times you always go out together when everybody is ready. Uh, spraying, we send the sprayers already, the sprayers are going, but, <coughs> excuse me. Seeding and harvest, everything, whether you're spraying actually doesn't really matter. Everything you do is a group effort around here, but for sure seed and harvest, we're starting a new season, we're starting a new year. Um, we're going to gather everybody here, probably grab a photo, and then, uh, then we're going to send everybody out when we're all ready to go. Like I said, it's group effort, team effort, family effort, all the same. We all go together. That's just how it goes. So yes, these ones are ready to rock and roll. But we're just ready for the last ones. Just doing some last minute touches. Everything is calibrated. No, you did not get to see the calibrations. If you want to see the calibrations, you'll probably get to see that later on in other videos when we switch to lentils. But otherwise, you could go back to last year's uh, start of seeding 2020. Um, I think I was doing some calibrations in that video. So then you can uh, watch us calibrate the, the carts. Otherwise, I'll keep you updated. Getting closer. Ashton just fine tuning everything in her cab, putting her lunch in her fridge. Terry just rolled up with his drill. Jared is over there, I think, wheeling his drill around. Oh, there's Brian and his. Don't mind me, I'm just eating my lunch. Try not to talk with my mouth full. pulling an 84 foot drill same as what we are in the 620s but we're pulling the 1300 bushel carts and Jared's only pulling a 950 cart once we realize we're still missing about half our crew because uh, they're out spraying and hauling water we've got to grab a few photos and then we're off go guys ready to rock and roll I'll see you when we get to the field I'm up on my unit got my little uh, Milwaukee bag my grease gun is in here with some other tools a gigantic lunch. Still gotta eat my sandwich. Take your shoes off. I need to vacuum my carpet. Ashley's just getting into hers. We're all loaded, fueled, deft, and we're all gonna split off. No, we're not gonna all be together. Ash and I will be together, and then the other three will split off. Okay, let's, of course I gotta move my lunch kit for my clutch. Let's roll up. Okay. We're actually not going very far, you guys. We're, we, Ash and I are literally just going to that field, like literally just right across the road. Great big move, I know, I know. My parents, they're not uh, big on the camera, so that's why I really haven't seen them much, uh, to be honest. Uh, neither is my older brother and his family. So you want to respect that. They just prefer to stay out of the camera and out of the light. Ooh. 
Ooh, big move, Mike. Big move. Is Ashton coming? Or... There she comes. Coming around the corner. Now that our big move is done, I'm gonna put my shoes back on. Ash is just pulling into the field there as well. We gotta do a run check. I'll show you guys what a run check is here in a minute. So the field that Ash and I are pulling onto, it's only 160 acres. We're gonna be hopefully done this field very quickly. Um, the reason why we're starting here is because we like to start right close to the farm because it's not a matter of if you're going to have some issues, it's a matter of just when you're going to have some issues. There's always some gremlins. Every farmer knows there's always some gremlins to get out of the system and you never start right by a road. Why don't you start by a road? That's a really great question. Again, because there's gremlins in the system and uh, if you're going to have a screw up, if, you're half, if half your drill is not going to seed for some whatever reason and you don't know about it, it's going to be right by the road. Just so you guys know, we are exceptionally dry. I always say that we are, we're, we fight, we battle drought eight years out of ten, and uh, this year is going to be. Looks like it looks like it's leading into a dry one. There is not a slough to go around. It's the opposite of last year. I don't believe there'll be many stucks this year. At least I hope not. I sure hope not. We get stuck this year, we're, we're in big trouble. Okay. Wing down, we've hydraulically turned on both those fans. I don't know if you can see that, the yellow right there. Okay, yeah, good. Fans are on. Let's head to the drill. Basically, there should be wind coming out. These are the mid-row banders. You guys already know that. I'm just refreshing your memory. Uh, it's 84 feet, and then uh, there, there's a bander that drops all of our nitrogen and sulfur right in the middle of two shanks. You see that? That's why they call it a mid-row bander. Got it. You guys got that. So that's where our mid-row comes out. That's our nitrogen and sulfur blend. And then we put out our phosphate with our seed. And yep, we got air coming out. Now we're going to go do our crank test. I call it a crank test because we used to have flexicoil 2320 tanks and used to have a crank on it. And we always used to have to manually punch out some seed. So I think that's why we still carry over and call it the crank test. So our fans are all going. Um, Fertilizer is going to come out one pipe. The seed and foss is going to come out the other. When I say fertilizer, I mean mineral. There we go. Got it. Our three tanks metering are active. Let's just hold it. You can hear it. There it is. You hear that? It's going through the pipe. Okay, you got it. There, you can see stuff coming out. That's taking too long to come out. You don't want that. Ha! Something is wrong. Because we have just fertilizer coming out and no seed. And the seed is coming out the mid-row banders. That is when you know that you screwed up on moving some hoses around. That is what you do not want. See? <laughs> that is, no worries, no worries. We just got the hoses swapped back. I bet you it's when I did my calibration. Let me go check. This is why you do a crank test, you guys. I bet you I got this. I bet you I might just derped hard here and didn't put these on right. Nitrogen is going out in the seed line, okay? There's a, right here, we got a fertilizer line and a seed line. So all my nitrogen sulfur is going out my seed line and my seed, which is this one, is going out my fertilizer line. Well, Mike, how does that happen? How is that possible? Well, last year, we would have finished off with pulses, and the biggest tank, where you put your nitrogen in and stuff, you put your pulses in there because you see them at a lot heavier rate, and that's the reason why. And in our FOSS, we would have put in our seed one because it's a smaller tank for the lentils or peas, chickpeas, probably chickpeas. So, that's why you do a crank test. I'm just gonna swap these puppies around. Forgot to mention, sorry about the wind, but anyway, it takes like three minutes 
uh, to pop this off of this one and then stick it into that tube. Then you get these blanks and you'll put this blank on here once I actually put that clamp on properly. Blank it off. Easy peasy. So now we got all those fixed and checked for air leaks. There's always going to be a slight air leak. You gotta remember how much air we're ramming through this puppy. Now let's try this again. There's our foss, there's our seed, that's what I want to see. Normally you would pull ahead and, you know, start fresh, but there's our white nitrogen sulfur coming out over here. Awesome. So now we just check, make sure there's a little pile under each. Obviously look at this one for example. He's pinched off here, nothing here, that's a problem. That's just, this is why we do this. So we got one plug. I like to go in threes. So two, three, one's plugged. Three is good. Three is good. Three is good. Let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit for you guys. I don't know. Okay. Three are good. Three are good. Three are good. Those ones, and now we go this direction. Okay, three are good. Three are good. This is good. All the way in. All the way in. Yeah. Yeah. Stay with me. Stay with me. Yeah. Awesome. Now we gotta do the banders. Good, good. Good, good. Yep. 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 Everything looks good. There's a little pile coming underneath. The center section's always a pain in the butt. Gotta jump up there. Holy crap, we're gonna need to put some tape on here. That's right down to the wires. Good thing I noticed that. Oh, Ash is here. So continuing on. Mm -hmm. Things look good. Looks like I just gotta do uh, one opener. All right, yep, I gotta get on this. All right, Ashton's heading over there. We're ready to rock and roll. We're gonna set it in the ground here first time, and we're gonna check our depth. I like to go uh, on a bit of an angle of the drill runs from last year if I can. So it's important to check your depth all the time. Uh, we're seeding Durham. We like to be about an inch and a half deep. Again, every farmer has their own method. Every farmer has their own reasons, and that's okay. Um, it's very important for us being down here. We don't know when the next rain could be. We might not get a rain, to be honest. I, I've seen it not rain all the way till harvest. That, I have seen that. Um, that is devastating. You will not grow hardly any crop at all. Uh, I I remember seeing the pellets of fertilizer granulars still fully intact, not clumped at all uh, from the little bit of the spill in the seeding time. And I remember seeing those piles still on the ground during harvest. Uh, we had zero rain, not even one tenth of rain, so much as a millimeter uh, from this point all the way till harvest time. And believe me, you guys, if you only get that, you're not even going to pull the combines out of the shop. Okay, so we're going to check this. You guys can see that or not here. I can zoom in a little bit. Let's 
There it is. You guys see that down there? Oh man, you guys can't see crap. Right there. Little fertilizer grain, little blue one to the bottom, and then little pink uh, derm right there. That's what I want to see. I want to see it into the moisture and around that uh, inch and a half or so deep. That's perfect. We're good to go. Okay guys, let's go seeding. Takes a long time when you're trying to switch into a new crop, trying to chuck everything, adjust everything, and so on and so forth. And we're going. Rattling at around 1760, pretty easy pull right now. Ground is dry. All right, guys. Don't you like those like two little bird turds there? I'm gonna do something with that. So we see it at 4.8 mile an hour when we're on cereals, and 3.8 miles an hour when we're in canola. Feels weird out here. I gotta brush the rust off or something. Ashton's over there. I think she's adjusting her depth. We're always tinkering and fine tuning. And sometimes, guys, you gotta tinker and fine tune like per field because your field conditions can change. Uh, not all fields are the same. You can have sandier soils, heavier clay type soils. Or maybe you're in a heavier clay type soil and it's seeding fine, but it's hot. It's not hot, but it's warm and windy outside because we always get wind. If we don't have a 35 kilometer wind every day, it's not Saskatchewan, okay? It's just not it. Uh, that's not even windy to us. We spray in 35K winds all the time. That's a good spraying day. Uh, it's when it gets up to 65 and 85 kilometer winds. We're like, ah, maybe we shouldn't go spraying today. Uh, but once it hits down to 100 kilometer winds or 110 kilometer winds, you're like, holy crap, this is serious. We should bump it down the hatches. Um, so wind really dries the top of the ground off. You know, you can, you know, you can start with maybe that top half inch dried up, but then there's moisture underneath, and you always want to put your seed into moisture, you guys. So uh, just checking on stuff here. Um, now I lost my train of thought because this happens to me all the time. Oh yeah. And as the wind keeps blowing every day, every day, every day, every day, you go from a half an inch to dry top down to three quarters of an inch of dry top into an inch of dry top. And before you know it, you have a solid inch of dry top. Then you go to an inch and a half of dry top and you're like, holy crap, I'm only seeding an inch and a half deep. So you gotta make sure you get that seed in the moisture. It doesn't have a chance. It just doesn't have a chance. You can't bank on moisture as in rain coming. You just can't bank on that in Southwest Saskatchewan. And then, it could, then you just start, then you uh, run into other issues when it gets that dry as uh, you start pulling up big lumps. Uh, it's big and lumpy because the clay is just hard as a rock and you're yanking up lumps and you're wearing your points off your drill like it's going out of style. And yeah, welcome to Southwest Saskatchewan. So anyway, I'm gonna let you guys go. As I said, this is April 7th. Um, it's probably a week earlier than normal for us. Typically we start in the middle of April. Um, to be honest, we probably could have been going on the fourth, third or fourth week of March, um, but, but it was just far too cold. Um, yeah, just too cold. All right, guys, you have yourself a good one. I'm going to kick back, enjoy myself, and do some seating.